What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Obviously this video is going to be a kind of continuation from the other video you guys would have seen which is me breaking down like the best Colosseum units. Uh, this time around we're going to be working with the treasure map characters. Of course I'm not currently home at the moment. I'll be back on the 11th of February so definitely look forward to that. Uh, really looking forward to coming back and making more content for you guys but of course while I'm away I have some pre-recorded videos for you guys including this one. Now a little bit different from from the Colosseum list that I made previously, uh, this time we're actually using Tier List Maker just because I found it to be a little bit easier in terms of discussing characters and in terms of like if I want to change a character's position then I can do that. Plus there are a wide variety of characters on this list that are like really really good and you should probably max them all out. Well that's a thing, just looking at it at a, at, a, at a regular standpoint you should probably max all these characters out, it's just that some definitely have priorities over others. Um, since the release of, the, I think it was, what was it, Treasure Map, Akano and Fujitora, um, they actually uh, increased the amount of tickets that we get for actually beating a treasure map. So that's really good. So you're going to be getting a lot more tickets, which means you can max a lot more characters. And just noticing this right now, I don't even see the Akano Fuji Treasure Map character. i got to go ahead and add them in. Okay, so now that I've added that in, let's go ahead and get into it. So, of course, I do have the tiers up on the side. Now, these are not like tier, tier 0 to tier 4, whatever. Um, these are just characters that you should max, like 100%. The guys on the top row are characters you should probably focus on first. But what we're going to be going through and uh, basically doing is going through each character upon their release. So, the first character release was Mihawk. Mihawk is an orb booster and a chain locker for the slasher class. He's really not that amazing. And another really big problematic thing about this character is that he is a Mihawk character, which definitely has competition with other Mihawk characters, specifically on a slasher team. I would list him as a mediocre character, but he is still pretty decent. If you don't have any good slasher units on your account, then you should probably focus on him, but just overall, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think Mihawk is that usable anymore, uh, especially, especially if you just have V2 Mihawk. V2 Mihawk, you just, you don't need this Mihawk specifically if you have the, the Legend Dex version of him. Whitebeard, I think, is actually a, a better character compared to Mihawk. Uh, Whitebeard, especially when he gets his buffed limit break, he gets additional turns of cooldown reduction, his AoE damage goes through barriers and all defensive effects, he has the potential to give your entire team an orb boost, um, he's a pretty useful unit to have. His captain ability is much to be desired though, unfortunately, but he is still a pretty decent character overall. I don't think he's in like a great tier or like a must max character, but he's useful to have. Um, the next is Cavendish. Cavendish is a Driven 1.75 attack and orb booster, and he makes sight orbs beneficial for Driven, I believe. I could be wrong on that one. But either way, he's got a pretty decent special. He removes beneficial effects as well. So specifically, if you are looking for a good Driven unit, this character is one that you would probably want to max out. But I would probably put him above Mihawk and in the same tier as Whitebeard in terms of how usable the character is. Uh, if you don't have good Driven units, then he's probably going to be a high target for you. But overall... He's just quite mediocre. Now, Gear 4 is an interesting one because on his release, he probably was like the best treasure map unit in the game. A universal 1.75 color affinity. He does a pretty good amount of damage to the enemy as well. He shuffles away your block orbs, which is quite good. It's the fact that since his release, so many classes now have their own dedicated color affinity booster that this character isn't as required as what he once was saying that though i still definitely use him from time to time and he is useful to have so i would put him in the good characters tier i don't think he's a great character i definitely think there are other characters that you should probably focus on the next is Ace. Ace, again, when he released, was one of the best treasure map characters in the game. Uh, full board of guaranteed strength orbs. If your captain's free spirit, you get those strength orbs beneficial. He's also a 1.75 times attack boost to strength, quick, and psi. So he's just an all-round great character. He also has a pretty decent captain ability as well. Um, honestly, there are a lot of times where I do use him. I would put him in the great characters tier, but I honestly, I do think that he could probably fit in this tier as well. I don't think he's a must-max character. Uh, around his release time, I definitely think he was like a must-max unit. But as time has progressed, he definitely has gotten a little bit weaker. There are some very niche pieces of content where he's going to be awesome for, like Raid Judge, where you specifically need strength orbs to break through his barrier. This ace is phenomenal for that. It, he's actually really good with the strength version 1 Akainu as well. Like, there's really cool combinations that you can do with this character. Um, 
it's really hard to place him. I think overall, he probably is in the great character tier because he also is a type booster for those three colors, which is always going to be useful to have. Um, I'll leave him in there for now, but honestly, he could really go here as well. It's hard to say for Ace. I haven't planned out this tier list, by the way. I've only just, like, thrown the characters in here, and I'm kind of just discussing it as we go. Um, but anyways, uh, Ace, I do think he could be in between one of these tiers here. I'm not really 100% sure where I'd put him, but uh, I'd probably put, I'd have to leave him in here for now. Uh, the next one is Sabo. I love this character. I think Treasure Map Sabo is one of my favorite Treasure Map characters in the game. The only problem with him is, is that he's a Sabo character. Uh, because you can't use him on Sabo and Koala teams, which would be awesome if you could. But if you don't know what he does, he changes all your colored orbs on your cerebral characters into matching, which is good because recovery and tandem are going to be beneficial with your cerebral characters if you're running the Zunisha ship. Or if you're running something else, there are a lot of characters that can make recovery and tandem beneficial. But he also provides a self-procking 1.75 times conditional boost against defense down enemies. And also, obviously, procs that conditional with reducing the enemy's defense. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal treasure map character. He also makes dex orbs beneficial as a sub, uh, which is also really good to have. Um, I'm going to put him in the great characters tier. Though the thing is, is if you have Sabo and Koala, it, it's kind of hard to use this character. Uh, before Sabo and Koala's release, though... This character was like a really, really powerful unit to have. Uh, I used him a lot when I was using version 1 Katakuri. Phenomenal character for that. He fits on Katakuri teams perfectly, uh, changing colored orbs into matching, as well as providing the conditional boost, which allowed you to then potentially get the delay, which would get the Katakuri conditional boost in the following turn. So yeah, I really, really love Treasure Map Sabo. Um, though, as it stands nowadays, uh, as I said, he's, he's kind of outdated because of the fact that you can't use him with Sabo and Koala. Now, the next character is the dual unit, Zoro and Sanji. This character is pretty good. He's an orb booster, I believe. He's an orb booster or a type booster for the... No, 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 strength. Uh, Sign Dex. Um, he also has a pretty decent switch ability. His captain ability is the dual form is pretty good, but and in their solo forms, it's kind of mediocre. Um, it's just that there aren't too many circumstances where you need to use this character, which is kind of unfortunate because the unit is cool being a Zoro and Sanji dual unit. Um, I would put him in the mediocre tier. Some people might rank him higher. I, I know that some, some free-to-play teams can definitely utilize this character a lot, but personally, the way that I see it and the way that I've been using characters, I really have never been using this character. I maybe used him a few times since his release, but honestly, like... I rarely use this character. There just isn't a need for him, unfortunately. Um, it is what it is. I mean, I, I just rarely use the character, so that's why I put him there. Uh, the next character here is going to be uh, Treasure Map Kizaru. Again, I... <sighs> it's kind of funny because as of late, I actually have been using him a lot, and he's been pretty useful. Um... For specifically dex teams if you want to run him on a dex team but you don't have to run him on a dex team you can run him on whatever team you want because he's got a really unique special where whatever color your captain is he boosts that color by 1.75 for three turns so it's really odd because he's got weird class and type combinations he's a fighter free spirit dex character which is really odd um I, I'm tempted to put him in the terrible characters tier but there are literally awesome situations where Kizaru has uses and that's mainly because as of late he's actually been pretty good um, If you want to build specifically like a dex team, that's where his best use is He also locks your orbs for one turn, which is pretty good um, So allowing you to carry orbs through multiple stages as well as carrying a type boost through multiple stages He could definitely see some play, but he's not amazing um, So now we can get to one of the first characters that I personally believe is a must max character Which is treasure map big mom she has helped out in so many situations. Now, she only has one class. She's not a dual class character, but that one class she has is awesome, being a powerhouse unit. Uh, she will remove beneficial effects, which is always useful to have, as well as applying a three times orb boost, a 1.25 attack and color affinity, a full board of guaranteed G orbs. And of course, there are plenty of characters that can shuffle your orbs around or just generate some matching orbs for your team. So the fact that you can use this character and essentially get a full-on massive burst of damage with just one special is so good. Her cooldown is relatively low as well. I believe it's like around, what, 10, 11, or 12 turns, something like that. So really low cooldown, amazing class, um, just a phenomenal unit. She, you just chuck her on a team, even if on a team where she isn't boosted. The fact that she gives your whole team a, a G orb slot, as well as the orb, the color affinity, and the attack boost... This special itself is able to clear many, many bosses, which is phenomenal to see. So, Treasure Map Big Mom, I would highly suggest, if you haven't maxed her out, 
to target her and max her out because she is so so good the next character is crocodile crocodile i would say is a good character um he definitely doesn't see as much play as when he first came out but there are some certain circumstances where you could kind of abuse his ability uh you could definitely use him on like neptune teams which is predominantly where he was being used um if you're running a buggy team you could run him on a buggy team if you want to do that for those who don't know what this crocodile does essentially what he does is is you run him as a sub on your team when you use his special ability for one turn he becomes your captain and when he becomes your captain in the middle of an adventure he's a four times universal captain which is pretty strong right uh he also gives you i think it's strengthened and it's strengthened one other orb of canada's beneficial i might be int i don't i don't remember exactly what it was but two separate orbs of canada's beneficial as well as being a four times attack boost so it means if you have a weaker captain but you need that captain for something specific you can switch it out on a boss room so you can get a four times captain instead so it's, it's kind of like a niche circumstance, but there are some situations where that's really good. Uh, this guy actually worked very well with version 1 Katakuri once again. I used V1 Katakuri a lot back in the day. And uh, the fact that Katakuri had a relatively weaker multiplier, the fact that you could switch into this guy, get a massive attack boost, guarantee you to get that delay. And then in the following turn, you can activate your conditional boost. So that was one way where you could really abuse this crocodile that I really loved. Um, but as I said... As it stands right now, in the current meta of the game, you don't really see too many people utilizing Crocodile anymore. Now, Jack. Jack, I think, is a character that is classified as a great unit. Um, I love this character so much. He's almost a must-max. Honestly, I do think he probably is a must-max, but I don't think he is as good as some of the other characters that will probably pop up here. Uh, Jack is awesome. He does massive damage with his special that goes through defensive effects. He has the ability to remove two turns of, I think it's Rainbow Shield and Damage Nullification, which there are not many characters in the game that can remove damage nullification so i think that treasure map jack is a uh, is a pretty good option to spend your blue tickets on because if you guys have seen in recent treasure maps when i've been building teams jack goes on a lot of those teams just because if there is an enemy stage with lots of enemies on that stage you could just whack jack on the team and uh use his special to just completely destroy the enemy which is very very useful to have uh, another character that's really great is is nl i would probably put him in the must max tier reason for that is is because he helps a lot with easier style of content because you can run him as a captain for your fortnite islands and literally auto play it and nl will just destroy the the entire island which is great um he has a really good captain ability he has a very good special ability and a great sailor ability so as a sub every time another character uses a special he reduces his own cooldown by five turns he has a 15 turn cooldown i believe it is something like that so you only have to use three other specials and you can use his special again and he does uh 565 000 damage fixed to all enemies and he also locks your orbs for one turn which is pretty nice to have as well so i think the nl he's so good i use him a lot as well um and i think many people would agree that nl is probably one of the best treasure map units in the entire game so i would probably rank him up in the must max tier another character i would probably put up in the must max tier is treasure map shanks i've been using him a lot as well very very useful unit actually he does have double special activation so you would definitely want to get the additional copies to not only limit break him but then feed those characters to rainbow him out because he does have double special activation which is quite important important for what he does if you don't know what he does he uh he basically gives you a really high chance to get matching slots then he shuffles your orbs around so it's a pretty high chance to get some beneficial slots but not only does he do that he adds tap timing bonus damage and he also removes one turn of burn and one turn of barrier i think that's what it is so with double special activation you can get that ability on multiple stages so you can get multiple beneficial orb stages or multiple turns of tap timing bonus or you can use his special twice in the same turn to remove two turns of burn and two turns of barrier, which can be quite key in a lot of situations. He has great classes, being a free spirit and a cerebral character, so fits well on Sabo and Koala teams, Luffy and Ace teams, any any free spirit or cerebral captain. Uh, he's really good on even on teams where he's not boosted. Once again, that's a really good feature of these characters that are must max is they work well on teams even where they're not boosted, just because of their own innate abilities. Shanks is a re relatively low cooldown with double special activation. Big Mom has an amazing amazing ability that can grant your whole team massive damage and nl also a really nice wave clearing character all these three are so good so far uh next we've got boa hancock boa hancock is an interesting character i would probably put her in the good characters tier um just the main problem is is that she's mainly built around utilizing the shooter class and the shooter class is one of the worst classes in the game she does have a pretty good ability though she removes uh resilience she removes damage threshold as well she does have double special activation as well so if you do choose to max boa hancock 
you would probably want to get the additional characters once again to rainbow her. Um, so the fact that you have double special activation on her means that you can get her abilities twice, where she can remove the two turns of threshold twice, the two turns of, I think it's she removes resilience as well, but she also heals as well, so you can get two turns of 10,000 heal, which is good, um, but she mainly is used for like a conditional boost and an orb boost for the shooter class. So it's an interesting ability, but it does rely on your captain having a very, very specific orb, which I'm not really a big fan of, but at least the utility parts of her special do not rely on your captain having any specific orb. So I do think for that reasoning, Boa is probably a good character for her utility, but there aren't many situations where you're using her for her conditional or the orb boost, unfortunately. Treasure Map Law, I'd say, is definitely a great character. Treasure Map Law is awesome, allowing you to get some beneficial slots. He removes Bind and Despair, I believe, and because he is a slasher unit, you can attach Whitey Bay to this character. You can attach Legend Corazon to this character, so you can remove additional turns of Bind, Despair, or Paralysis if you have Corazon. Um, he has, he's also a chain booster. He also reduces cooldowns for Fighter, Slasher, Cerebral, and Free Spirit, I believe it is. He has a Sailor ability where he resists Special Rewind, so because he resists Special Rewind, you can then use his special to reduce your character's cooldowns. Very useful effect to have. Um, he works very well on Legend Carrot teams. If you have Legend Carrot, then Law would be a character you would probably want to get your hands on. Um, and just, this character's awesome, and I use him a lot on a lot of different teams. So, for that reasoning alone, I mean, pretty self-explanatory, Law is one of the best treasure map units in the entire game. Really, really useful to have. Next character is a full-on utility-based character, which is Treasure Map Nami. I would... <sighs> I think, I think Nami is a must-max character, honestly. The way that, that, it, that we look at it, because she removes a lot of different debuffs. She removes Paralysis, she removes Burn, Chain Coefficient Reduction, I'm pretty sure. Um, she also will remove uh, your Badly Matching slots. You change Badly Matching into Matching slots. So she is just a full-on utility-based character. So I've pulled up the database right here. You can see 11 turn cooldown to reduce Paralysis, Attack Down, Chain Multiplier Limit, Chain Coefficient Reduction, Burn, and Blindness by 3 turns, and Block and badly matching orbs are changed into matching so i think that with all of that utility in mind that i think nami is probably a character you should probably go ahead and max out pretty self-explanatory our next character is kaido kaido is kind of a character you don't really use too often um but in some again very very specific circumstances kaido is kind of cool uh you can basically enable it so kaido just does a massive hit of damage which is kind of cool because then you can utilize characters like v2 doflamingo to get massive overkill damage with kaido then use v2 dofi to wave clear you could use him on a v2 katakuri team if you are specifically going up against a dex enemy you can have massive color affinity with the boost that kaido gives to himself he's also a pretty useful character because he does remove beneficial effects but he does apply effects on top of that as well so you can't like stack effects on top of it which is kind of annoying but the fact that he does remove beneficial effects will always be somewhat useful he also cuts hp um so kaido is an interesting unit but not one that you really use that often honestly i literally haven't used the character Character, maybe as a captain yeah i used him as a captain for another treasure map boss in the past but since that i literally haven't used him for like any piece of content so it's kind of unfortunate because kaido is a cool character but unfortunately he's not an amazing character overall some people would probably rank him a bit higher but i think kaido's just just mediocre uh next is treasure map doflamingo i also think he's kind of a mediocre character he provides damage reduction he gives you a full board of beneficial slots to your driven characters uh he's pretty he's pretty straightforward honestly he has a pretty decent captain ability after you use his special i believe is a 3.5 captain for driven which is pretty good um but look once again another character i just rarely ever use but on paper he is a pretty decent character giving you beneficial slots and uh a damage Reducer. So, you know, he, he's okay. He is okay. Next character, though, is Smoothie and Oven. I love this character. I use this character all the time. Um, but because I use this character all the time, I don't think they are like a must max character. But the main reason why I use them so often is on Legend Jack teams. Uh, when I'm running Legend Jack, I predominantly want to be going through Fortnite as fast as possible. And by using Smoothie and Oven, you are definitely able to do that with their switch ability, giving them end of turn damage. A lot of the time is enough damage to KO a majority of mobs on Fortnite Islands, which is really good. But outside of using them on a jack team uh they have a great captain ability they boost three separate colors in quick sigh and int they are an orb booster for quick sigh and int they shuffle orbs around they give you beneficial slots to certain um to certain slots as well for certain classes uh just they're a pretty decent unit all around uh, i just don't think that they're like a must max unit they're not like the best unit in the game but they're just a useful unit to have you know what i mean 
Next character though is Weevil, pretty self-explanatory. Weevil is one of the best treasure map units in the game. He's awesome because he is a two times attack booster universal, as well as giving tap timing bonus damage to himself, which is a pretty predominant tap timing bonus damage to himself. Obviously the attack boost will only work if the enemy has a debuff protector, and I think that includes a delay protector. We can actually go ahead and check that. Uh, Weevil, who I think it's debuff and uh, full immunity and delay. Yeah, full debuff immunity or delay protection. It's a two times attack boost. And this ability as well, removing 20 turns of attack down. There aren't many characters in the, in the game that can do that. And for that reasoning alone, uh, Edward Weevil is a very unique character that you should probably max out. He is so good. Uh, next one is Shanks and Ben Beckman. I'd put them in their great characters tier. They are very good uh, with a special ability that can grant you color affinity and a chain lock. But remember, after you use their special, that's the only special you can use during that turn, um, which is a very unique mechanic that they've applied to this character. But <laughs> on paper, though, if you, if you were able to apply other effects on top of that, it is kind of broken. And this character is very, very broken if you have other dual units because you can still use the swap effects of characters on top of their special ability. So on top of getting a 3 times color affinity and a 3 times chain lock, you can switch your dual units to guarantee them a beneficial slot, um, as well as giving either a type boost or an orb boost to themselves. There are many different characters that can apply effects like that. So uh, Shanks and Ben Beckman are very good but you do need some other characters to kind of like make them like work well you can definitely use legend shirahoshi with them as well to guarantee you some rainbow slots um and then with their special ability active you can't remove those slots so that's a really interesting kind of way that you could get around that as well uh the next character is luchi i think luchi is probably in this tier main reasoning for that is is because luchi he requires to be at full hp for him to get his special basically to activate and if you're not at full hp you basically get a 20 percent health cut and that is it uh he only will uh, like uh, luchi <sighs> Luchi is very disappointing, and I'm really upset about that. His captain ability, yeah, it's usable, I suppose. Uh, but his special ability being a three-turn double orb boost to Cerebral, like, that's really good. Um, but you need to be at full HP. Uh, on top of his orb locking mechanic, you also need to be at full HP. Uh, so it's a really, really big drawback to the character. If this character did not require to be at full HP for his boosts, he'd be easily in this tier. But because of that... I think that he probably deserves this tier right here. Uh, the character that released after that was the Akino and Fuji unit. This unit is actually pretty interesting. And of course, because they are so recent, uh, I haven't actually had a, a chance to really play around with them, which is kind of a shame. But they're very, very interesting with the fact that with their switch ability, they guarantee you a 1.5 orb boost to three separate colors. This unit's going to be very good on Douglas Bullet teams as just getting an orb boost every single turn makes Douglas Bullet's damage just get amplified by a huge margin, which is great. They also give it a little bit of a health cut this could be used to get around resilience which is cool instantly defeat enemies with that multiplier times their attack they randomize all your orbs into guaranteed strength or into orbs which again under douglas bullet that's a guaranteed full board of matching slots for your team and a 20 percent health cut to all enemies like this unit he's a very very niche type of character and i haven't played around with him a lot but at the moment i'd probably put him here but he could easily fit in this tier he could easily fit in this tier, but at the I'd probably put him in this tier because that, that switch ability is so good. That switch ability is very, very good. Getting around resilience and also giving you an orb boost, that's a pretty useful switch ability that not a lot of uh, dual units have in the game. And the final character is this smoker right here. Again, he has he's currently not out as of me recording this video right now, but he's pretty interesting because he is a chain booster and he is an orb booster. Um, he's an orb booster specifically for fighter and driven, but he's a guaranteed two times orb booster fighter and driven. If your captain is fighter or driven, you get a 0.7 chain boost. So to have an orb boost and a chain boost, and he does a bit of damage as well. On top of that, uh, as a sub, he also gives you a beneficial slot. I don't remember which one it was. Let me just pull it up because otherwise I'm going to get shit wrong and people are going to roast me in the comment section. Uh, smoker, uh, dex orb is beneficial for fighters. He does 100 times to one enemy. Two times all booster fighter and driven. If your captain is fighter or driven, he's a 0.7 chain booster. Again, another character that works very, very well with Douglas Bullet. I think just because he works well on two separate teams, easily should be put in the great characters tier. So 
this is this is looking at it at a grand scale right now these are the characters that have been released right now now some of these characters definitely seem more play than some of the characters here these characters i think are easily the best ones in the game that you should focus on first um but once you get past this tier and you've maxed all these units in the top tier then you could start working down here and figure out you know what characters do you have in your character box and what treasure map characters work really well with the characters you already have if you have a lot of good dual units i think shanks and ben beckman would be a good pick if you have douglas bullet then these two would be a very very good pick if you had some good cerebral captains you can run the sabo or this luchi if you want if you have good driven units you can run this cavendish or this doflamingo or this kaido kaido works very very good on powerhouse teams as well same as whitebeard like you've got lots of different options here and it really depends on what legends you have and how do you want to support those legends? So it really comes down to what you have in your character box, but definitely focus on this must max tier first. Big Mom, NL, Shanks, Nami, and Weevil, all of these guys see lots of play on a lot of different teams, and I think a lot of people would agree with me, at least on the top tier, at the very, very least. But that's going to end this video today, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.